What I'm looking at is Gambius's new mouse. This is their brand new Hades M1 that should be released somewhere around the time that I released this video. I pre-purchased it, paid a little bit for it to get it early because I wanted to look at it and because I had a bigger plan in mind with the whole Gambius build with all their new stuff. There's drop A power supply, the Aeolus fans, using a chair, all that good stuff. I'm gonna make a, a complete, as complete as I can, Gambius build as it exists on the market or will exist on the market here soon if not already, if that doesn't make sense, sorry. Whatever's out now, coming out soon and will be out later. Anyways, looking at the Hades M1 mouse, this is a pretty cool mouse. Now it's a $40 mouse as far as I know, I don't know, maybe they overcharged me, maybe it'll be less when it releases, maybe it'll be more when it releases, I don't really have an answer. But for $40, you get a mouse that's rechargeable that has a built-in lithium ion battery and you can plug it up and charge it and that's pretty cool. I like that a lot, especially for the price point because not only is it rechargeable, it's modular, it comes with two additional wing attachments that hold on via magnetic clips on the side as well as the stock one which keeps it pretty flush to the side but not only is it modular it's weight adjustable too something we haven't really seen in a lot of mice that have been coming out the weight adjustment is a pretty cool thing it's supposed to be programmable and usable via Hera which is their software and their UI unfortunately I won't be showing you any of that in this video because I can't get Hera to work with the mouse the actual version of it that should be supported by it is not released yet you go on their website and I read that it added support for Hades M1 mouse but it doesn't talk to Hera. And, and I'm not really sure what the problem is right now, but I'm sure that'll be addressed and fixed when it goes to release. So the mouse has seven programmable buttons, which again, I'm sure in Hera will be able to be programmed via the software. The seven programmable buttons are gonna be your left and right click, your mouse scroll wheel, your up and down DPI, and your forward and back buttons on the side. The sensor that they use is actually really cool, and I was completely surprised by how good the sensor was. Now, out of the box, it goes up to about 10,000 DPI with uh, Hera customization, according to Gambia. But I don't, I don't think a lot of people play that high even. It's, again, something I, I can't test. I'm sorry. But the sensor is the ATG4090, and this is a PixArt creation and collaboration effect with other companies like Gambia. So it's kind of that new generation. We're getting out of that 3000 series, moving into the 4000 series, and I've got to say the sensor is pretty awesome. Using it side by side with the Logitech G703, I couldn't tell you a difference. The scimitar that I use on my side used the 3367, just a variant of that 3360 sensor. And uh, I got to say, it's it's pretty amazing. It's pretty on point. Now, I don't think we're using Omron switches here. It's a 10 million click life cycle versus like the 40 to 60 million click you typically see with Omron. I believe these to be Hue U switches. Forced the actuation's a little bit stiffer than like your common Omron switches. So comparing to the scimitar to the Logitech G703, it's a little bit of a stiffer click in order to get it to actuate. The side buttons though, man, those things are on point. They're perfect for at least my thumb and my hand. I do find the mouse a little less comfortable than the G703, but at the price, it's somewhat forgivable. The sun came out. Go away again. Uh, we'll pause real quick, take a listen. Uh, this is what the switches sound like. We'll compare them to the Scimitar or the Logitech G703, whichever one I do. We'll compare it with how those sound and you can hear how the mouse sounds. Out of the box, it pulls at a thousand is what it says. Unfortunately, mouse rate checker only clocked it in at about 745 out of the box. I imagine that can be adjusted. I just can't get Tahara to adjust it, but it's 745 out of the box, roughly. So it says as a weight system, it goes up to 126 with max weight. I don't believe that because I used my postal scale, what I use when I weigh things to send you guys stuff when you win giveaways. And I weighed it in at a total of, those are measurements for the bedroom wall, hang on. I weighed it at its lowest, am I still in focus? I weighed it at its lowest weight at 110 grams. That's with the weight system removed and using the stock wing on the side. Now, if I add the weight system and leave the stock wing, we're looking at 135 grams. Now, each of those additional modular wings, if you prefer to go with something a little different, uh, one of the, obviously, modular wings, one of the two additional modular wings they send with it, those are each five grams. So if you add one of those on top of the full weight system, then you're looking at 140 grams. Pretty heavy mouse. It's, it's a little bit on the hefty side. I like that personally, maybe you don't. Now considering price, because if you're looking at about 40 bucks, the charge solution kind of fits the bill. 
but I would have liked to have seen something like a charge dock that wasn't only a charge dock, but a wireless transmitter as well. Instead of having a little Bluetooth dongle to plug in and then having to plug it in with the cable and charge it, I would have liked something that I could have picked it up and docked it on. I think that that would have been pretty cool and a nice implementation. Unfortunately, that's not the case here. Got that old school plug it into the front, use it as a wired mouse while it charges and just let it charge. Also, you're going to want to make sure you're using a passive charge port, something with a USB 3.0, 3.1 that has the lightning bolt, which will indicate that it has passive charge whether your PC is shut down or not. Otherwise, you plug it in, you shut down the PC, you're not charging the mouse. So again, I think something like the Razer Naga Epic, when they released that, I had one of those for probably about a year and a half just to pretty much have one. I liked the fact that when I was done with the mouse, I could pick it up and set it in that charge dock. But of course, you were paying a premium for that. And with the newer things that are out now, like the power play or the Qi charging, you're gonna end up paying somewhere around, around you're going to end up paying somewhere around $200 for either of those setups. So when you take that into account and see that this is a $40 rechargeable modular weight adjustable mouse with a brand new sensor from Pixart, it sounds pretty appealing. As far as the lighting goes, I got some minor issues with it. Uh, we're looking at hot spotting again and kind of some dead zone spots on the lighting and that's something that I'm not a big fan of. I can't go into Hera and play with the lighting features as of right now. When I can, I'll update and pin that post below and uh, let you guys know what I think about that. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video when we do the Gambius build. I can touch on some of that with the mouse because hopefully Hera will be updated at that point where I can show you these features. I really like this mouse and I definitely think it's something to keep your eyes on, especially if you can't afford a $200 power play setup or a $200 chi charging setup especially if you think the dark core is ugly like me because that dark core mouse corsair is is just ugly looking i'm sorry and i'm sure there's someone out there like man i got the dark core it's so cool looking i'll leave this part out of the video before i upset a corsair fanboy i'm a corsair fanboy i'm allowed to upset i can talk about my corsair people like that so i'll definitely try to touch on some more detail when i do the gambius build video because that's going to include everything from the nyx p1 mouse pad to the gaming chair which uh you know i've done reviews on already to things like the m3 keyboard the Hades M1 mouse. We're going to be taking a look at the Aeolus fans and the Astrape power supply, as well as one of their AIOs, which is delayed release here. I'm actually working on it now. I am just waiting on a few things to come in for it still. And uh, once I have all that and I have it put together, we'll take a look at all of that. And again, hopefully I'll be able to touch on some of the features with Hades. I'll just kind of sneak it in there like a ninja and say, hey, look at these features real quick and show you guys, hopefully. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this. I hope it was a little bit helpful. If it wasn't, I totally understand because I'm missing the Hera aspect of it, which uh, Hera in itself can be its own problem sometimes. But anyways, leave a comment down below if you have any questions and I'll be sure and get back with you. Like it if you like it, dislike it if you didn't like it. And I'll see you guys in the next video that I do, which should be pretty soon. My wife is playing, that's what the test is Right. <laughs>